Are you feeling out of sorts, losing sleep, can't seem to make any progress, maybe feeling like your spiritual practice is pointless? Stay tuned. We are going to talk about all of that and provide some solutions and next steps in your spiritual practice. Hello, everybody. It's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls. If you are new here, I am a spiritual practitioner talking all things spiritual, human interest, and working with angels and archangels. Even if you think that sounds really weird, stick around. You have no idea, really, right? So, all right. So first and foremost, this unsettled, maybe feeling a sense of like, I feel like something is coming. I feel like something is on the horizon. And maybe not being able to sleep or if you've been having weird dreams or just feeling out of sorts. But more than anything, suddenly feeling like everything you have worked towards has been for nothing. What is going on here? What is the energy around this? So Archangel Gabriel has been wanting to come in. I would ask all of you to make sure you are paying attention. There's a reason why I'm saying this. Pay attention to my social media channels. Okay, make sure you're subscribed here. And if you are subscribed here, make sure that you're checking out the community tab because I'm going to be putting up some things, probably some posts here and there uh, every time Archangel Gabriel wants to give more messaging. So instead of maybe making a whole other video, if I don't have time, I can just pop it up there and you don't miss a thing. Okay. So keep that in mind. They just come through when they come through. So Gabriel is coming forward and saying things are having to shift massively. And this has to do with something far greater than our individual stories. Even though we as individuals, the energy we're putting out there is contributing to a collective energy. <sighs> something has taken a hard turn. And we are seeing that evidenced out in the world with how people are behaving. Sudden turnabouts. Yes, this is a time of shock, surprise, People, oh gosh, how do I put this? People being proven wrong? But I hate putting that out there like that. That's me putting that in a human way, just trying to explain the feeling. But it's like, I believe in this, I believe in this, I believe in this. Whoa, that is brand new information. I didn't know all of that. So there's something being revealed here. And you might, again, some of you, well, a lot of you who are watching this are very open and sensitive. But even if you don't see yourself that way, you are you are intuitive. Okay. You absolutely are. You have an instinct. So if you think that something might be going down in the world, even if you can't articulate it in your logistical mind, in an intellectual way, you just know, right? Something is coming. So this big shift that Gabriel is talking about, Gabriel is also coming forward and saying, this is more than ever, super important that we are concentrating on the heart space. Archangel Raphael can help us with that. And not, so we have to get more balanced and we're not, you hear me say this all the time, not burying our heads in the sand and pretending like things aren't happening because it ruins our vibe. And also not getting down the rabbit hole, being very reactionary. This is not going to be helping us at all. So this is going to be a, a perfect time to be working with Archangel Gabriel, okay? I will be putting things up about how to do that. Of course, if you want to work with me, you can just go to my website, angelsouls444.com. You can sign up for a reading there. I did, I didn't post it yet. I just made, hold on, please hold. I just made a discount code because again, I know I'm a small business, but I know that times are tough for everybody here. What the heck was it? That code is Archangel Gabriel 20 you can use that for standard readings uh, until it turns off, okay? So I don't really have an endpoint on it at this moment. It really depends on how many people have come in and used up the code. And then I'll shut it off if I need to catch up and then we'll take it from there. But if you want to get a discount, this would be a perfect time to learn how to work with Archangel Gabriel. You can ask that in the submission form. This is very easy, okay? It does not require any time commitment on your part. You just go to the website you fill out the form. Maybe it's how do I specifically need to work with Archangel Gabriel? What is the approach I can take? I will record that for you and get that service brought back to you. And then you can listen to it. Please remember to save your readings to your computer. If you've got a personal reading, you know you hear that all the time, okay? Because eventually I have to erase them on my end and we want to make sure they're somewhere safe, all right? But you can ask about 2024. 
If you are having some of these feelings and you're having a hard time working on it yourself, again, we're through this reading, we're going to be giving you some tips here on, on what you can do. But if you want to go a little bit deeper, you know, something very specific to your situation, feel free to come with your questions, whatever they are, even if you think they're shallow questions. Okay. Because even if you feel like you need to address something on the surface first, fear not with an angelic messaging reading, we start with that and we go deeper, right? So angelsouls444.com for that. And I'll reiterate, watch social media because I am going to be making some announcements. Good things are coming. All right. So let's get into this energy here of, I feel like nothing's coming to fruition. A lot of people are feeling stuck in their manifestations. And this, again, Gabriel is saying, this is because of the backdrop and choices that have been made. I'm hearing that very clearly. Choices have been made. Okay. What does that mean? So this isn't a thing where, you know, less than ideal intentioned people are winning. It's not really about winning or losing per se. That's not really what's coming through. It's more about people doubling down out of fear. Yeah, out of fear. Doubling down because they're afraid of losing power. Doubling down because I have a housing update here too. So stick around for that. And an economic thing. It's all coming through. Okay. <laughs> it's all it's all coming in here. I'm trying to get it out of my face and to you. But let's see. So the the because of these uh, fear decisions right uh like mostly a fear of being out of control people are sort of doubling down on what used to work but we're not in that frequency anymore which then will reflect on your personal life too so if you if there's an old way of uh manifesting let's say well you're having to up your game a little bit here it's not really a game but <laughs> having a deeper understanding of you know where is that manifestation point what does that feel like within you and hint it's not in your brain it's not in the mind okay it's when you get into a deep relaxed state where the outcome actually doesn't matter so you actually have to bypass all the ego stuff to get into that what we call flow or however you want to describe that but it's your personal place of serenity I hear it all the time. People are like, are you kidding me? And probably with the, within the context of this video, are you kidding me? We're in this chaotic world right now. Everything is going off. We're living in fear. And you're telling us we should be able to manifest and, and go to our serenity place? Yes. Yes. And that is actually the whole point of a spiritual practice is to help you maintain access to that place despite what's going on around you. So first... We want to give you validation. You are not crazy, okay? <laughs> you are not crazy. You are picking up on something. Yes, there are lots of things in the works. Yes, there are people making decisions that you are picking up on. And if you are getting into a place of despair, please know, as always, I always say, make sure you're getting proper support. If that's a therapist, some other kind of counselor, just you know, doing that with your spiritual practice, you, that'll help you come on through. All right. And I know this is a rough time, but this is temporary. This moment is temporary. This feeling of foreboding. And yes, that, that means that there will be things constantly happening. But this, this exact push that we're feeling, this is a temporary moment, right? Everything ebbs and flows. So if you can bring your attention into that heart space and start working on I'm going to let everything go for just a moment. I'm going to put everything aside for a moment. Now, I have an ADD brain, okay? I absolutely have that. I'm learning new things every day, and that was one of them where I was like, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense, right? <laughs> and I started understanding myself more. And even I, when I try to go into a meditation, right, I'm popping out. I'm like, oh gosh, did I do this? Did I do that? Did I, did I do that appointment? Did I, oh gosh, I wanted to do that and I didn't get to that today. Mm, I forgot to call those people and work this one thing out. All that, at least in my brain, is natural, okay? So if you can relate, comment down below, I feel you, okay? Or you can say, I have that same issue 
or you're not trusting the process that is coming up for some of you. I'm going to reflect that back to you. So some of you are afraid to let go and to allow yourself to come into that peaceful place. The reason why I'm sharing the ADD thing, and for some of you it's ADHD, uh, you don't have to hit it the first time, okay? It's it's okay. Like there's not like a scorecard with the angels and archangels. It's like, oh, you, you failed, <laughs> right? You can, you can take your time with this. That's why I often encourage people to meditate right before sleep. That way you're kind of relaxing into your meditation, okay? Or doing that when you first wake up. But just be patient with yourself. Expect that you're going to pop out and, you know, all that's going to happen with practice, all right? You're going to feel at ease with being at ease, right? You're going to feel at ease with being able to let go for a minute. Now, some of you out there who you have a family, you have a house to run, you have all those things, there might be disruptions, you know, that can happen. But for each individual situation, you will be able to get to a place, I promise you, you will be able to get to a place where you can do some deep breathing, allow that nervous system to calm down right? and to allow yourself to go into what I call the heart space. Um, every practitioner out there has a different term for it, but wherever you can find, like I said, your personal serenity and that flow. And then from there, you don't have to do much thinking. I mean, there are lots of different processes with this, but what I'm hearing from Archangel Gabriel is set the intention before you go into meditation. That way the brain isn't trying to go, and I invoke the Archangel Gabriel of God's purest love and light. And I want to, I'm mocking myself. <laughs> so, like, but, like, and I want to manifest money. Okay, we're going to talk about that and what's going on in the backdrop. So it's not you, it's not your fault. Okay, hang with me here. This is your time, me and you sitting here. Okay, we're in this beautiful community. Allow yourself to take it in and enjoy it. All right. But as you get into that um, meditation, after you've set these intentions, now, whatever it is, money, house, love, good health, relieving yourself of bad habits, whatever it is that you want to do, now you're free to be in the flow of that. Now, Gabriel, and this is one of the benefits of working with angels and archangels. They guide us through this stuff. You are not on your own. Let me repeat that. With angels and archangels, you are not on your own, right? And these are higher frequency beings that can see things that you can't see, okay? <laughs> right? They understand you and love you on a divine level that we as humans often forget. So even if you go into this space and you are troubled, maybe you're crying, maybe you know, it just feels like the humanitarian part of this world is hopeless. Bring Gabriel in. Gabriel helps with nurturance. Gabriel helps with anything having to do with the sacral chakra or the throat chakra. Okay. Let Gabriel, and I know what some of you, pay attention to what your brain does as I say this. Let Gabriel come in and hold you like a baby. What happened just then? Comment down below. I thought that was really stupid. Comment it. It's okay. We want your authentic reaction here. Okay. Be honest. Where did your brain go? Did that suddenly feel very comforting? Did that feel like, I just, well, I kind of want that, but I feel silly admitting it. Admitting that I just, I just want to be held and I just want to feel like everything's okay. And that I'm going to be okay. My family's going to be okay. That people all over the world are going to be Okay that we can find our way back to loving each other instead of choosing sides. And I mean that with all my heart and you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I will die on this hill. Okay. <laughs> with that opinion for sure. We just, can we get to a place where we love and appreciate each other? Let these archangels come on in and guide you through that thicker energy. If that's how you want to see it. Let them guide us, especially Gabriel, feeling comforted, right? This will help raise your frequency a little bit because you're laying down the stress, okay? Then allow, it'll happen differently for everybody. Again, that's where if you want a reading with me, I already gave that information, angelsouls444.com. We can look at um, some of the things that have come up for you. I can give you a personalized recording. That way you can work on it, okay? Uh, 
and see what presents to you. The number one way we mess up and self-sabotage, I'm laughing because, boy, am I talking to myself or what? Okay, I totally do this. But, like, but, you know, the way that we do this is doubting, right? That's not saying don't have critical thinking, but don't negate all the beautiful things that are coming your way. Do you see what I'm saying? And pushing it back out. See it for what it is and then decide whether you like it or not. Okay, so whatever's unfolding in front of you, maybe some of you, uh, you're really into visualization, right? So for you, there might be a beautiful meadow that shows up. And in this space, you can make it look any way you want. Okay, you can have neon forest, right? And you can have neon butterflies if you love that. If you want something quieter, some people like to feel like they're in a cave, And um, I think that is probably very much a womb (laughs) metaphor, maybe, I don't know. Or they just like the silence and and almost some people get scared of a sense of a void. And so they try to pop back into their bodies. Not that you're actually like projecting out per se. That's a whole other thing. It it is a whole other thing. Um, Some people get a little afraid and they pop back in and others find comfort in that. It feels like there's a vastness. There's a vastness of potential And that is the space they want to create from. It really is up to you. And it will maybe differ every time you do this practice. So if say, like sometimes I close my eyes and go into a meditation. And a lot of the times the way I perceive angels and archangels would be not necessarily orbs. Um, I see them as a piercing light. um, But they're not always perfect orbs. Sometimes I see that. But more than anything, a frequency of light. And I go by what I feel. When I feel this overwhelming sense of love, a kind of love that is indescribable in human form, that's a God love. That's a divine love. Okay. Where it feels like I can trust anybody, any soul that comes to me in this space is a loving being that I do not need to be afraid of. That's when I know I'm in the presence of angels. So sometimes, depends on, you know, how you want to perceive them. Yes, they can show up as humanoid beings with gigantic wings. Some people love that. And they love the idea of the angel wrapping their wings. Gabriel is cool with anything, okay? Like, however you want Gabriel to present this love, it doesn't really matter. It is more about you accepting it. And when you come out of that meditation, pay attention to how you feel. Pay attention. You may not have an immediate, like, oh, I feel like everything's fine now. But I know when I am getting overwhelmed. This is a great practice for overwhelm, okay? When I come out of it, I suddenly just feel calm and centered. And I know that I don't have to take on everything today, I'm going to do this one thing, allow myself to feel that little sense of accomplishment. And then I'm going to try this next thing. Am I tired yet? Sometimes the answer is yes. Or I will stop. And in this clear space, this will continue on even after you're out of the meditation in that clear space, you can ask yourself, what would really bring me a lot of joy right now? You would be shocked at the answer that's most likely going to come through. It may not be a European vacation. Um, yeah, um, that would be amazing. I sometimes I'm like, I really want to get back to that book I've been reading. I just want to cozy up next to my Christmas tree. And by the way, I got one of those Santas that's like in a little airplane and he goes around the Christmas tree. I got one of those. Those are all over the place. (laughs) They're like viral. My whole family has one. But anyway, sitting next to, you know, my Christmas tree and it's all lit up and I'm just reading my book. Sometimes it's, I want, like literally I do this, I'm like, what would make me so happy right now? I want a big old salad. I know, I'll be like, salad? What? My body was like, you've been living large for too long. I don't know who you think you are. Get us some vegetables. Like this is ridiculous, okay? (laughs) And not cooked vegetables, but like a salad. Your body, your mind, your heart, your soul has the clearest voice in moments like this right? It's often pretty simplistic. Or maybe I have like a little craft or something that it's not this feeling of I have to do this to have a sense of accomplishment. It's like, okay, this could be fun. 
anything. If you've watched me for a while, I always talk about hobbies. Have your hobbies. Why? Creative life force practice, okay? It actually helps. If you want to see it as a muscle, the manifestation muscle, by getting the creative life force going. Hobbies, depending on what it is, can also be very meditative and soothing. There's a reason why people like golf. <laughs> now, some people might be like, it's too expensive. It's too involved. I can't hit that little ball with a little stick. Who came up with this, right? But you're outside, right? You're in the fresh air. It's just, it's a little bit of activity and then probably some walking or maybe getting on a cart and then it's a little bit more activity. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not like this overwhelming kind of thing. So I could see where people would find that very relaxing. But anything meditative, anything that, you know, helps you focus. And remember, you don't have to do it for too long. So that's, Gabriel was coming through and I, you know, as always, I'm always asking for what kind of message should we bring through? And this was like an SOS. We need to bring people comfort. What you are feeling right now is not your fault. It is not your fault. You are not a bad person. If you are experiencing financial hardship right now, no, you're not. Yeah, but I went on this spending spree. You probably did that for good psychological reason. I mean, I'm not an expert in all that, but um, people eat in certain ways, you know, go shopping. Maybe they gamble. Maybe there are other vices. You have those vices because you're trying to soothe yourself. Okay, so you went and you charged up your credit card. Are you aware of it? Are you now willing to take action to start paring that down and, and taking care of it? Are you asking yourself, what might I do that helps me? Because especially like the example of shopping, that is such a part of our society now where it's like, oh, you got to have this. You got to have, you know, it, it's all over the place, right? So people then get, you know, convinced to purchase something. Maybe you get a sense, if, especially if it's like pressure shopping. There's a lot of those boutiques online. It's like, we only have three of them in two sizes. You better run. And even though you don't want it, and even though it's the ugliest thing, and you know it's the poorest quality, do you go running to get it? That's like, I, I'm again, I'm not an expert in this, but that kind of makes me wonder if that's not hitting the gambling part of the brain. I don't know. The sense of accomplishment. The reward. I won. That was exciting. And then if you ordered it, you have the anticipation of it arriving. And then it's like you got a gift. Even though you know what it is, it's like, you know, treating yourself, right? So those are some of the things, like if you have a habit, I have plenty of them myself. You know, I, I've been doing like the nervous eating thing. My big thing is I get to the end of the day and the last darn thing I want to do is cook. Okay, so what do I do? Where can I get Chinese food? Oh, yes. That, yes. Okay. Actually, that sounds really good. But I have to examine this. What kind of day has it been? It has been a pain of a day. Yes, it has. I swear to God, every day I wake up, I'm still, it's two months I moved into this house and I'm still unpacking and there's nowhere to put things. And every time I wake up, something's broken. <laughs> Like stuff that made it through the move, now it's broken. I might have a ghost in here. I don't think so. But you know what I'm saying? Like that, examining that. And at least I've come to that bit of awareness that, you know, sometimes orange chicken just tickles my brain and it makes me feel great. Okay. <laughs> also makes me uh, chubby chubby, but whatever. Okay. But, you know, balancing that out, <laughs> having some awareness, this is what Gabriel can help us through. And Raphael is going, um, I'm here too. You can work with Raphael to help with bad habits. Okay. Or habits that are not serving you. Um, in this example of the food thing, I mean, sometimes for how I eat, you would think like, oh, your health, but no, I got perfect numbers. Like get your medical records out. Let's compare them, especially if you're thin and you're fat phobic. If you're one of those people constantly judging others for their habit, let's see how you're doing, right? And that's the point I'm trying to make. So let's talk the housing market and the economy. These are kind of going hand in hand. Now for the longest time, and this, I want to explain this and be completely transparent with how this goes, 
okay? As far as like um, getting a hit of intuition around something, especially working with angels to provide more backup for that, I guess. I don't know. So I have been feeling and been saying for the longest, banks are going to come down. Um, definitely we're in, in my opinion, at least a recession, right? And there's all this narrative out there saying, no, we've had, we're having the best time. Who? Who's having the best time? Who are these people? I think you're lying. Okay. Like for sure, that's a lie. And then what happens? You might not be sitting there feeling very abundant and you're hearing what well, other people are. That's a lie. Other people are not more abundant than you. Okay. Everyone's having a hard time right now. That's why I keep offering the codes, uh, you know, for the readings and stuff. I mean, obviously that's how I make my living. And I know that people are struggling and if we're going to help each other out here, then, you know, we have to come up with a solution, right? So all of this has been sort of escalating now. What will occur around this? Well, there is a break. There is a breaking point. Now the when, again, when you add a bunch of energies into it, this is why I don't do predictions. I would fail miserably. If you do predictions and they come true, God bless you, okay? But like, as soon as I tune in and try to do a prediction, I can feel all the other potentials kind of dip it around and I'm confused. And I'm just like, whatever, okay? <laughs> the timing of it, the time's not linear for angels, okay? But it could feel like it's more like January. I think we get some hint of it here in December. It could go into January and then it just sort of affects for months to come. That would be where I think, really, I think what the break is, is a lot of people coming out and speaking the truth, truth about what they're really going through. Not just complaining about the cost of groceries, not just complaining about the cost of gas, rent, well, we're going to talk rent, okay? All of that, not just doing the complaining energy, but saying transparently, I want to share my story. When we come at it with the sense of sharing, we have a connection with one another, okay? That's, that's far more supportive, nicer than, can you believe the cost of these groceries? Yeah, I know, bro. Why did you stress me out again? I almost forgot it for a second. And now, <laughs> now we're back, right? So just keeping that in mind. Now, every single one of you, you will be just fine, Lean in. Every single one of you watching this video, you will be just fine. And you are loved. You're never alone. We can be there for each other. And no, we do not need to wait on circumstances. You hear me say this all the time. Wait for circumstances to fall into place before we feel good or feel happy. We will all be fine. You might have to be resourceful. But whatever comes up, make the most of it. We learned how to do that when we had some creepy things happening for a few years there. Right? I tell the story about the Thai chicken recipe all the time. All this stuff is going down through the pandemic and all of that. The lockdown. I, I shared with you guys, I was completely isolated. I was by myself. And plus, I mean... I don't know. You couldn't really be around other people anyway. But I remember I was feeling like most people and I bet it was really rough for other spiritual practitioners as well. And I was feeling this when you're a spiritual practitioner, you're supposed to have the answers. You're supposed to be a comfort to other people. And yet I wasn't really getting that for myself. Right. And so I was starting to not break down, but I was again, I was getting depleted, I, I would say. And I remember I was like, dang, all I want is some Thai chicken. And it was this place that I used to get it from, but they weren't open. And I got up, mind you, I had not been to the grocery store in forever. Okay. <laughs> just This was literally a recipe I put together from stuff in my kitchen. And I didn't write it down, which was so stupid because this was the best Thai basil chicken I imagine well, that I've ever had. But I've never been to Thailand, so I have no idea. But delicious, made me very happy, and I had the sense of accomplishment. And I felt uplifted. And I thought, huh, look at that. When we're really pushed, look at what we produce. Okay, fine. You know, Michelle was just chicken. It was not just chicken, okay? Don't you tell me about this chicken, okay? <laughs> this 
just some delicious. This has been a very food forward kind of video. What have you. Okay, anyway, <laughs> there is that. And that is part of the approach. Please take the guilt away. Don't listen to what is being put out there. You are not alone. This is not your fault. Now, the other thing that I've been feeling is that there would be a housing market dip at a minimum, okay? If not a pretty big crash. And as I was saying that, you know, I felt it. And you probably feel it too. Like you feel like something's looming. Something's there. Um, and only just recently, I was going through social media as one does. And I came across some experts in the field. Now, these are not realtors. Okay. They're not going to tell you. We, and we understand that. We understand you got your gig. Okay. You got to do your thing. But I'm talking like financial advisors coming out and saying, uh, yeah, this looks like there could be a crash. Looks like it's going to be a pretty hard dip. Now, for some people, you know, there's all kinds of ramifications around that. And for some people, you're like, oh, thank God. But even if that were to occur, do you have the money to take advantage of that moment and get yourself a home? There's going to be a lot of catch-22 around this. There's going to be a lot of like, yes, breakthrough, but there's this other consideration. So do be watching for that. We do not want to pray for anyone's downfall. We don't want to be working against people who would help us find a house. That's not the intention here. The reason why I'm putting that out there is because some of you are struggling with housing costs. This maybe, depending on your situation, might bring a little relief. Or if you have been looking to get a house, maybe this is your time. Now, I am not a professional in this area. I am not advising any of you to hurry up and sell your houses. Check with an expert, all right? But there are massive shifts and changes. Let's talk about internet. Let's talk about electrical grids. Yes. Yes, what, Michelle? Yes, it's going to go down. Yes. Now, I think it won't be full-on blackout conditions. It might be what we've already seen. We're going to be seeing more of things that have already happened, where like something did happen for a week, three weeks, something along those lines. But it comes back up. There will be attempts. There's also a lot, like I feel really, I don't know, there's something there. Some of these people who think they know everything, think they know history. They think how, they know how um, everyone should think and move and speak. And there, there, there could be something that occurs on American soil. Okay. I hope not. I hope I'm wrong. Let's celebrate. I will happily be wrong about this. But every time I hear usually a young person, God bless you, a young person, for example, talk about 9-11 and they weren't even born yet. And what, oh, you want to talk about cognitive dissonance. Ooh, it is so weird to hear people talk about that, like a historical event. I'm sorry. I'm laughing nervously, but you can tell that they weren't there much like probably like people of my generation. Like if we talked about historical events, it might've been weird for people who lived through that to hear us talk about this, but they're speaking of this. Uh, and you can tell that their bit of research was from a textbook, which we know textbooks are not typically accurate. Okay. They're usually very biased. Depends, right? Depends on who's writing it, but they're getting their information secondhand. Even if their parents have told them about that time, Presumably they love you, okay? And presumably they would want to protect you the gory from the gory details of that time. And so you're going to come out forming your opinions about the world based on a piece of history that you've heard about but didn't experience. And so you think you've got all the information when you don't. All right. There's a reason why I'm going into this. That is just one example of what we do in many areas of our lives, Okay. This might be, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had an example pop up in my head. I was talking about, uh, re, you know, you know me with angels. I'm a Scorpio, I'm a stellium, a stellium Scorpio, so I'm always reinventing myself, 
what I do here, trying new things. If that new thing doesn't work, we drop it. We, that's the ADD too, probably. Oh, breakthrough. <laughs> but I remember I had somebody I was telling them, I was like, yeah, I want to do something new on my channel. And this person, I swear to you, had said to me, have you, have you thought about using tags on your videos? No, I have not. Not ever. SEO, what's that? <laughs> I could never with our, oh my, but that's that kind of thing. Like, even if you're trying to be helpful, like there's going to be a lot of, it's around communications and just things dropping off and people not realizing how they're coming across. I, the reason why I was given that 9-11 example, I just came across this um, video on TikTok and uh, oh, I said, it. let's see how well this goes um, on the clock app. Okay. Uh, and this young woman starts off answering someone's comment by saying, finally, you're asking the correct question. Ew. I need your credentials. Uh, that start asking for it. I need your ID. I want to know how old you are. And yes, it does matter. That's great. You're a big girl now, but are you really an adult? Okay. Do you have life experience? Y you don't. Okay. You don't. That doesn't mean that your perspective is not valid, but I would cool it when you come talk to us, especially Gen X. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, they don't even recognize us. They just say we're all boomers, but that's fine. Uh, but yeah, this young woman was sitting there and she started off with that attitude. <laughs> she <laughs> went into 9-11 uh, and how it was. And there were people who suffered, you know, she's, talking about um I want to I don't want to put too much into this video but basically the negative effects then of hating a certain group of people and how plenty of people suffered through that now she was going into detail she was talking about certain people who um because of that day were seen in a certain way and even lost their lives okay but she didn't give any more information about that. Again, it just felt like it came out of a textbook. Okay. So she's trying to present this like human interest, but not giving any of the human details. Okay. Maybe, maybe that was out of respect or something. I don't know. But anyway, she's talking like an expert on this and likening that to the current situation. I got where she was going with that. I was trying to follow her. Uh, <laughs> But what she was saying was not entirely accurate to the point that I would say she was given misinformation. How do I know that? I was there. I wasn't in New York City when that happened, but I was about her age on that day. And there was a lot of things that were left out of the history books. And I can tell that she didn't bother to ask anybody else, maybe outside of her family, about what those times were like. I've made videos on my connection with that and how I moved to New York City in 2003 and got put in graduate student housing on William Street, which is right next to Wall Street, which is right near where the towers were. That I was in a building that had only just reopened for reasons that are graphic and I will not go into them. I visited the spot to pay my respects. I saw what was still happening there. Now, if this young woman was really interested in something beyond being right, she would have asked those questions. That's one example. That's where I want to wind down this week's message. Okay. Make sure we're not jumping to conclusions. Prejudice in any form is not okay. I don't care what you think you're fighting for. Being hateful is not okay. No horrible action is ever justified. And feel free to test me on this. Go ahead. Oh, that's a Scorpio camera. Okay, listen, maybe I need to ease up. <laughs> I'm not even that, like, I'm not scary. I don't think. I just sound, I don't know. <laughs> I'll work on it. But put it down in the comments. Give us some thought. Give us some thought. Where do you jump to conclusions about people? Do some self-reflection and put it in there now before you leave this video, okay? 
or if you do have to leave the video, make sure you come back later after you've thought about this. Some things that I need to work on now, seeing a, a Gen Zer, and I love you guys, okay? You would, I mean, I would have definitely had kids at an old age because <laughs> I'm not a young parent kind of person. I could have never. Um, so some of you would have been maybe my kids if I had them. Again, if I got, if I had kids when I was older um, and I love you guys and I love you like a mother would love their children, but some, some of y'all really anger me. <laughs> you got me <laughs> fired up over here and boy, the mama in me wants to come out and it's unexpressed because I had no children. Okay. It's unexpressed. So I would just, you know, some of y'all like really... You need to do this exercise. Be careful with what you're saying. Don't lead with your agenda. Okay. Don't lead with wanting to be right. And this is for everybody. It's not just Gen Z. Um, take a beat. And where I was going with that is that I need to watch jumping to conclusions when I see a Gen Z person about to comment on a world event. I do kind of get into the mindset of, oh, what fresh hell is this? I need to pause because <laughs> I, because that's, what is that? What am I doing? Here's the process, right? We all got to do this. What am I doing in that moment? Well, I'm disregarding their point of view. And maybe there's something, you know, really enriching in their point of view. So far, a lot of it, all I've seen is anger and wanting to be right. Wanting to have control over the conversation. <sighs> But most of us are not dumb. We see it. We see right through it. We know what they're doing. We were that dumb at some point too. Of course we were. Okay. <laughs> Every generation thought that they knew everything at the age of 20. Um, yeah. So that's one of them. Another one I have to work on is trust issues. Okay. Assuming everybody is out to do something horrible or not really that. That's overstating it. I would say more than anything, waiting for people to let me down. Now it's justified, okay, but how can I approach that in a healthier way? Like giving people a chance, but not giving them too much of my energy until we have a slow process of getting to know one another and then slowly opening up, right? Like those are some things that I need to examine. What's my fascination with Thai chicken? Why? <laughs> now I'm on Chinese food. I kind of want Chinese food. Comment down below. Okay, let me know. I want this to be an interactive kind of thing. And I think the best way we can do this, at least right here, right now with this video, as you're hearing it, comment down below. And if you can, because these are timeless readings, really, go back, if you have time, come back and watch this again at the end of the week. Go back and watch some of the previous videos. This is telling a story. And each week, it seems like the angels are giving us another part of the story and another part of the story. And we're getting as much as will ping and uh, sort of uh, be in harmony with whatever our soul is ready in this incarnation, ready to hear and to deal with. Please be vigilant without, I know this is a hard thing to ask and it sounds very contradictory, but without being anxious or too afraid, yes, it's possible. I have been vigilant myself without allowing myself to be completely drained from it. Stopping and questioning, critical thinking, giving your heart a break. We talked about that in the beginning of this message. Okay. So I think we'll, we'll leave it there. Please remember to watch the socials. Okay. I'm working on some things. You want to know, I think I would hope anyway, I love you. I love you. And if you hung in this long, I really love you. That is so kind of you. <laughs> really appreciate you guys giving me your time and spending this time with me. So we'll leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.